Good afternoon, Doctor. Uh, I think it's really a pleasure to be with you today, and it's also a landmark day for MindRay. It's a dream come true for us when we have an installation like Resina A9 in your center. And so our special thanks on behalf of MindRay to you and Dr. Raja Chaubal and to everyone, I think, uh, who will be working with us. But of course, the real proof of the pudding will happen when you start using, and we are really looking forward for a very you know, good feedback in the times come by. So as we are moving, yes, sir, in this direction, uh, before I have, we have a few questions. Before we go into that, could you briefly tell us, you have been the pioneer in ultrasound for all of us, you know, carrying this flag of ultrasound, not only for India, but across the world, in applications beyond the routine ultrasound in terms of contrast, in terms of shear elastography. So we are really, I think, very proud to be part of here. Could you Briefly tell us about yourself and your center so that we can uh, have some good understanding. Sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, Ikambara. And uh, it's our pleasure also to have this new machine with us. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, using it uh, and using experience the newer features uh, which are there in this machine. Uh, and we like to explore technology and that's how we have come all this way. So actually it's been, it has been an interesting journey uh, for me and for our center as well. So uh, the, my guru, of course, was Dr. Mukun Zoshi. And uh, stepped into the ultrasound field. Basically, when I joined this Ion Hospital as a lecturer, okay. uh, which was uh, way back in uh, 84, 85, oh, in that those okay. days, yes. That time, ultrasound was very new. We were very few machines in, in the town. And we were very fortunate to be working with uh, one of the greatest person in India, Dr. Mukun Zoshi. So we started in San Hospital and we had uh, those static scanners uh, with us. Uh, so I have seen everything happening. Uh, we worked on static scanners, we worked on linear scanners for quite some time. Uh, then fortunately I also uh, started uh, working with him in his own centre as well as at Jaslok Hospital. And uh, uh, over a period of time, I, just, I think I joined Jaslok in 86 or so. And uh, then over a period of time, of course, uh, uh, around the same time, that is around 87, we started our Thane Ultrasound Center in Thane, wow. in a very small place with a second-hand machine, uh, which we got from Dr. Mukun Zoshi again. And that was a linear scanner machine, uh, Siemens machine. And then, of course, uh, over a period of time, uh, everything went off well. And uh, uh, we, uh, we moved on from that linear machine to a small sector machine and then... Uh, gradually, we graduated to you know all these levels. But uh, one field, one thing was, of course, that uh, uh, we were always fascinated by new technology. And uh, uh, fortunately, my son uh, has the same sort of uh, uh, yeah. you know greed for newer technology, I would say, and that keeps us going. Absolutely. And God has been with us, so we have moved from a small center to a medium-sized center to this place uh, over a period of year. So from, you know, so it, it has been a very interesting journey and as you said that we have really seen everything. We have seen uh, static scanners, we have seen uh, the convex probes, the, uh, you know, the linear probes of course and then uh, sector probes and then grayscale of course, A mode, B mode, everything. And then of course we were the first in the country to have a color Doppler in the private wow. setup as well. Okay. So the, we were the first in the country to start the contrast program in 2006-2007. Wow. Okay. So it, it has been a wonderful journey, and we look forward to uh, you know uh, using uh, newer and newer technologies in future as well. So, doctor, it is a, really a pleasure to be part of this whole program. I have a couple of questions, and our very first question is: How, as an ultrasound technology in particular, has improved in the recent decade, doctor? So I think uh, the most uh, significant thing is the uh, uh, grayscale. I mean, uh, what the grayscale or the basic resolution was uh, many years back and what it is today is is what has really revolutionized things. And today, uh, I mean, honestly speaking, as far as resolution is concerned, I don't think there's any other imaging modality which has got as good resolution as ultrasound has, whether the CT or MR, as we know it very well. So I think that has made a big impact. So whether it is... Uh, picking up a very small defect in the fetal heart or a fetal brain or whether it is picking up a small nodule in the liver and the kidney yeah. um, it is the resolution uh, which has really 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 significantly uh, changed the whole thing and then of course uh, we have had 
color doppler will change things and we now we have slow flow techniques microvascular imaging whatever you way, way you call it uh, these has again revolutionized thing okay. and now we are looking forward to the uh, functional aspects like we have been doing contrast for quite some time uh, we are looking at uh, elastography and of course we are looking at fat quantification so these are some exciting things of course which are happening but uh, the bottom line is that uh, you know the way the resolution of the machines has improved over a period of time uh, maybe at times we are seeing things which uh, which are too many but then uh, <laughs> okay. that's the fun of it but uh, we Absolutely. have to draw a line between what is important and what is not important similarly with color doppler it, it does happen that at times you see flow uh, which which is you know like not really required or something which which confuses you but then okay. uh, there's where your clinical judgment lies you know to draw a line between what you want in clinical practice versus what the machine is giving us yeah. so that balance is very very important absolutely and very that nice. comes to experience i think yeah. okay very well sir and i uh, sir, sir i think we're really very happy to hear the kind of priority that happens currently sir within this technology in the emerging within ultrasound uh, which is really revolutionizing the ultrasound imaging sir so i think besides revolution uh, the resolution uh, uh, the uh, changes in color flow imaging has uh, really caught up and that has make our made our life easy but what is what we are looking forward uh, in future is easy availability of contrast media and a proper use by everyone okay. so as of today we know that you know it has been uh, there are small pockets in the country which are using contrast in europe they use it a lot yeah, okay. korea japan use it a lot but in india it has not caught up and but i think with availability uh, more people using it uh, this is something which gives us answers left right and i mean just for an example uh, two days back last week uh, rajesh was with me and uh, you know there was a mass reported on a ct scan and we were not convinced the clinician was not convinced so we did an ultrasound we did a contrast and we were convinced it is an abscess we put in a needle and we got the pus so you know uh, uh, contrast i think plays a very important role but somehow Uh, for various factors you know it has not uh, you know come in the forefront in india but i hope that it will come uh, forefront so for me we are looking forward to contrast coming in a big way uh, we are looking for elastography to mature it's fairly well matured but to mature further and of course fat quantification which is the sort of a new thing but uh, that also needs uh, you know a little bit of maturation but i think over a period of time in the next two or three decades this is where Um, fat quantification will play a major role okay. and uh, we will be able to uh, you know use it uh, appropriately to prevent uh, complications of our diseases of of the liver diseases absolutely sir absolutely and we are with you on this and we are very uh, much you know validating this fat quantification having moved to the high frame rate shear wave elastography with lot of quality control factors we are now going to launch also fat quantification as a simple upgrade on existing yeah, machines sure. that be part of it sir and uh, the fact that elastography as we said is you know is well established in liver but uh, we are looking forward to its application in other fields so we are using it in small parts musculoskeletal system but with uh, the machine which we have uh, we will be using in endo cavity probes we are looking forward to using it in uterus to differentiate fibroids adenomyosis we are looking forward to use it in prostate a lot so uh, the i think elastography applications will become wider uh, with time to come and uh, all these newer technologies will also further i think come Absolutely. in a big way okay i'm we are so very happy sir when you have such a wide interest in the shear wave elastography not only for liver for also other parts where it can be used uh, yeah. uh, we as an organization today already forefront of it and we have uh, a whole body application and all the probes are compatible for that yeah. including transrectal endovaginal and even we have a cervix elastography also validated at this moment yeah. so thank you it's been a great uh, i think honor to be part of once again so within this sir uh, ultrasound and also other imaging modality moving forward i have a very interesting question for all of us here is that you know the technology of ai and deep learning has been the talk of the town and everywhere i think people are using it in various walks of life and Absolutely. also in imaging so according to you how will the machine learning and ai will impact in the radio diagnosis doctor well it is already made an impact and uh, as we can see that most of the machines which are coming up now uh, have an ai within them and uh, it has made life easy to certain extent i would say okay. uh, especially when it comes to measurements uh, you know it does automation setting up things it does for example in fetal heart we have a lot of automation uterus we have a lot of automation 
but I don't think that it will really, especially in ultrasound, it won't yeah. replace the skill. Uh, okay. Because this is a, a technique which is absolutely skill and experience dependent. And uh, AI is there for us to use it. It is there for us as a definitely as a, a complementary tool or you know to enhance our working. But uh, at the end of it, I think at least as far as ultrasound is concerned, you know it's not going to really replace anyone or you know it, 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 we we need to use it in a very justifiable way so that it, yeah. it benefits the mankind ultimately absolutely so unlike x-rays you know where people now talk of we don't want radiologists we have x-ray put up and we get an answer <laughs> CT scan reporting etc the same thing is not going to translate into ultrasound Absolute. because it is still uh, a, a very heavily skill dependent uh, technique absolutely. and uh, so we have to take it in the right uh, gesture I think we are doing that we are using it wherever it helps us but at the same time we have not forgotten our own skills and judgment as yeah, well as interpretation. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where I think you've been pioneering in training so many radiologists in so many years in the last yeah. I think two or decades or so. I think I think the whole community of radiologists are ever grateful for this your focus of training. Yeah. So this is I think the forefront of whatever you do and I think you have been Yeah there's nothing like efforts. sharing knowledge. I mean that's the best satisfaction. So we have students all over not only in India but uh, all over uh, the globe, I would say, today, yeah. uh, who have been trained in the uh, TUC, Thani Altazan Center, and who are doing very well. And when you come to know about their achievements, you know, the pleasure which you have yeah. is ultimately that's, that is that is important. Sir, absolutely, yeah. we are with you on that, sir. Sir, we have another question. Uh, among the multiple modalities, MR is an area where people really look at it as the foremost within the imaging modality. But we know ultrasound has gained so much. So, what part of MRI can also be used by ultrasound? Well, I think Rajas would be a right person to okay. uh, answer that, but because, uh, okay. you know, that is one area like musculoskeletal ultrasound where we have a marriage between ultrasound and MRI. That is one field where I think both can, you know, play an important role. There are some areas where MRI is, of course, going to score a lot. But in a country like India, still, I would say that, you know, ultrasound uh, plays, is a primary modality for screening. For so many things, and uh, right from newborn to, of course, pregnancies to uh, any anything for that matter, yeah. and it is also a um, uh, excellent modality for intervention. I mean, uh, today, if you want to do a biopsy, want to do some uh, therapeutic procedure, doing it under ultrasound guidance in real time is so convenient and so safe from the patient's point of view. You are monitoring the needle tip each and every microsecond, so you know. So that so I think in these two areas, that is basic diagnosis, screening and interventions, especially in areas or lesions which you can see on ultrasound, I don't think anything will replace ultrasound. Fantastic. Today we did a small child who was only about two months. You know, we had a heart beating, we had a effusion on one side which was insisted. So my needle was, you know, like you know, a few millimeters away from the heart. But because I was real time, because I had a control on my needle, I could see things as they were happening. I was confident in what I'm doing. Absolutely. And this this will not happen with other modalities. Absolutely. So absolutely. I think in India, uh, it is the modality for many more years to come. And uh, that's why we are very keen on developing the skill at all levels so that the country had, as, as a large you know, benefit from whatever absolutely. knowledge and skills and machine absolutely. technology which we absolutely. have. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Absolutely. So, sir, uh, as an ultrasound, I think uh, we have seen it as established as a diagnostic method of choice in certain clinical investigation in many parts of the world. As an expert in this sub-specialization, can you elaborate uh, in Indian context, uh, how do we take this forward? No, I think uh, training. Training is very important. That yeah. uh, I mean, we have people doing, but they should do it properly. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very important, especially when it comes to uh, obstetric scanning. Training is very important. Yeah. So it is not only getting a machine or buying a machine, uh, but it is uh, utilizing it in the right way. Okay. And uh, I mean, people are definitely getting, uh, they are getting trained. But I mean, I would urge all youngsters to keep update, go on learning. And, and then use the technology in its rights perspective. Okay. You know, and then uh, we can really do good for the country with this technology. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. According to you, you know, uh, from the imaging industry, uh, as we evolve uh, in the near future, how do you, uh, or what is your suggestions to all the stakeholders from the industry? Yeah, I think we are very fortunate 
that all the stakeholders have been very cooperative with us and not only us in i mean our societies and uh, everyone to, uh, in general and uh, over a period of time if you see uh, you know it's it has uh, the imaging and the stakeholders have worked like partners and uh, for That's example true. if you take ira or uh, other societies like ifmb we have meetings before the main annual meet where we get together we discuss each other partners uh, each other's uh, each other's problems and i think that's the right way of doing and uh, we have I, th- i think we are very fortunate to have uh, over a over a period of years now that i am there for many years and i i have worked very closely with uh, you know very seniors like dr mukund joshi and dr sudarshan agarwal for that matter who were pioneers and who had well established relationship with other stakeholders and companies so uh, the way they treated them you know with respect uh, and the way they were they were reciprocated yeah. from them yeah. it was a unique relationship i think as a youngster i learned a lot from that yeah. and um, and therefore i think at least from my generation i see the same thing happening we have a very good relationship between uh, uh, you know on either side and this has to be there and this this will only ultimately as i said it will benefit uh, you know our country in general we'll i'll spread our knowledge in the right way Uh, we do cmes in the right way and uh, everyone will benefit if we have this sort of a mutual thing which fortunately we are i think we are we are lucky to have people like you and so many other companies always a pleasure yeah. sir thank you sir finally i have one question i know this is related to mindray which we consider as a if you want to cons- we are as a trusted partner for healthier bharat what is your comment and observation sir yeah uh, very honestly i have knew this company for many years but it is uh, only of uh, you know of late that they were having a real sort of close relationship but i, I think f- from a short experience which i have had for the last couple of years i would say uh, i think it's we are doing very good work in the sense that uh, you know you are helping out people and uh, uh, spreading knowledge which is very important you are helping the ira uh, some of the programs of ira which are in preventive medicine we are you are helping them a lot some people of course from the company whom i know for the last couple of years Uh, i think our relations are good and you are doing good work um, and hopefully of course i am very sure that in future uh, this relationship will only be get, get thicker absolutely sir everyone. absolutely you are very much committed sir uh, not only as an industry but also as a part of this partnership to involve in all the missions what you have in terms of training the radiologists in terms of doing a joint programs in uh, clinical research and other activities to enrich and empower the whole community sir doctor i think it's a, always a pleasure for us to be you know uh, be involved in all your endeavors and activities and today is a proud moment to be part of this landmark event being a uh, it's not only installing but also having so much of you know association going forward thank you once again sir Thank, Thank you. you it's my pleasure to be with Thank you. you Thank you doctor Thank you so much yeah.